I just want to give a quick thank you to WD-40 for sponsoring this video. You guys might be wondering why Big Red is in the shed. Well, we have a known issue with the radiator. Um, it leaks fluid. About every single day of a hard day running, I have to put like half a gallon of radiator fluid in. And during harvest, that's not gonna be too kosher with me. So uh, what we're thinking right now is pull the radiator off, take it somewhere and have it inspected and hopefully fixed. I really don't wanna have to buy a new radiator, but uh, I'm willing to have to if that's what it takes. So. Um, right now I'm trying to avoid from having to take off the hood because I don't know how we'll get it back on um, But we'll just have to wait and see right now I'm gonna start by draining the radiator fluid out of the radiator system. There's a plug down here and uh, I don't know how I'm gonna do this without making a mess, but um, It's probably gonna fill more than one five gallon bucket. So uh, I'm gonna lose that empty it out Take all these off Basically there really isn't too much holding it on um, take those brace arms off and whatever secures it on the bottom there there's probably a bolt way back on the inside that's holding it on but uh, we're gonna go ahead and since this is a slow season there isn't any more grain to be hauled um, just go ahead and tear into it so this thing does have oil leaks too but the oil leaks aren't anywhere near as bad as the radiator leaks because it it has a pool of radiator fluid after running down in the bumper there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but anyway, what do you say we get started? I came to the slow realization that the plug was definitely not coming out without destroying some things. So what I ended up doing was remove the two clamps on the hose on the bottom half of the radiator and drain the coolant out that way. Once I drained the fluid out, all I had to do was remove the hoses on the far side and remove the hoses from the charged air cooler as well. And then I could move on to removing the braces on top of the radiator. Bazinga. And now I have to remove the hood straps. So right now, uh, I'm not totally sure what we're gonna do. I'm probably gonna do what my Uncle Wade said and uh, put the bolts back in on the top of the radiator and lift it out. Um, you might be lucky with the JCB. Strap a train around the quick attach on that and pull it up out. Uh, luckily, the JCB has the reach and make it a little bit easier than it would with the Bobcat. Yeah. We're having some troubles getting the bolts out on the bottom of the radiator. So I went to town and bought a bottle of the WD-40 multi-use product Easy Reach with a flexible straw because we tried to get up underneath there with um, some other stuff and it wouldn't work. So this can has the flexible straw in it. You can literally point it straight back up, uh, which is just what we need. See, I couldn't get in there very easily to get the spray the bottom of those bolts because they are rusted. 
made my life a whole lot easier. Last bolt. This is the one part of this whole process where the hood would have been nice to take off. Well, it's, it feels like it's sticking on something. My, yeah, my end is stuck. Uh, hold on. Okay. Push out. I don't know if that happened before. The way it was twer twerking, it was going out that way. So if anything, it should have pulled it down, not pushed no, it up. No, just now? No, it's been like this. That's what I mean. It must have been like that. Right. If anything, the other side would be like that. It's not hurt at all. Looks like it's leaking on both sides. After spending a few minutes trying to separate the charged air cooler from the radiator, we decided we better leave that to the professionals. So we bolted them back together and I took them down to driveline in Dubuque. So we just got the radiator out of Big Red. Thought something was missing. Anyway, um, we have to take out this bottom bracket yet. And we're gonna put that on, back on the radiator before we put the whole thing back in. Um, the difficulty with leaving that in there was that there's two bolts on the inner side that secure it. Um, they're on like a rubber mount. Two rubber mounts right there. And um, I tried with the impact and I couldn't get them off. So we're gonna get in there with probably the torch, heat them up, get them out. And then when we go to put the radiator back in, we'll just put the bracket on and then slide it back in. Uh, it should be a lot easier. So, um, got it all unhooked. We're gonna take it down to, what's the name of the place? Driveline. Driveline in Dubuque. And hopefully they can fix the issue that we've been having with it, which is it burns anywhere between half a gallon to a gallon of radiator fluid. It burns, it leaks it um, a day. K080570 HD. So I'm gonna take that down there in the morning and uh, hopefully get it back relatively early and we can get this thing back together. It's been one of the things that I've been worried about fixing by the time this harvest comes around because a gallon of uh, radiator fluid is like 10 bucks and that's like 10 bucks a day just in radiator fluid that we're losing. They make uh, shock mounted ones now. So I'm just coming from Chuck Country now. Now the flaps that are bad on the side of the radiator, uh, apparently those are like 96 bucks a side. So the, I ordered two for the top and bottom, but the side ones they don't make anymore. So what I'm gonna do for the side ones is I'm going to take some duct tape probably and duct tape the ones that we have now um, together and just call that good. But 
I quoted out a radiator and the OEM one was like 950 bucks and the aftermarket is like 650. So depending on what we can do with the radiator we got, um, I might just order an aftermarket radiator tank for Big Red and uh, call that good. This needs to go over there? Yeah, or vice versa. Maybe it might be just better to pick it up. Uh, I took the brace off the alternator, so I had more room to get in there with the crescent wrench. Ouch. I just got the fan belt off of Big Red, as you can see there. Since we are working up here, we figured might as well change the fan belt and the alternator belt as well. So we got that off. I actually had to take off the tightener for the alternator so that I could get into the tightener for the fan belt. Um, so that gave me enough space to wrench on it to get the lock nut off where I could loosen the tightener. So I'm gonna wait for the belt to come in because nobody has one around here. Uh, O'Reilly's could get one in tomorrow, but it was like twice as expensive as I could get it off Amazon. So I just decided to order it through there. In the meantime, last week I had taken the radiator down to driveline in Dubuque and have them take a look at it. And what they decided was that there was no fixing to that radiator because it had started to leak on each side between the metal and the plastic. And they said that once it starts to leak out there, there's really no patching to it. And to me, having the peace of mind of having a new radiator is worth it. Um, so the new radiator was 550 bucks. Um, I got two new flaps on the top and bottom, which are supposed to form a seal under the hood so that it's supposed to improve the airflow through the radiator. And we've got the charged air cooler right here. It's underneath, we already have it mounted together. Uh, they painted the charged air cooler, which I wasn't too crazy about, but as long as they use uh, the right kind of paint, it shouldn't hurt the performance of it. If they had painted the radiator, it probably would have been a bigger concern for me, but uh, I'm not too worried about it. So, what does a turbo do? Why do we even have a charged air cooler? So, looking over here at the truck, there is the air filter. Intakes on the other side, what it does is it filters the air, sends it down to here, where it goes into the turbo. Now, on the exhaust side of the engine, the exhaust comes out and it spins the turbine wheel inside the turbo, and the exhaust heads out, and it turns a compression wheel inside the turbo on this side, and that compresses the air, comes out here, goes into the charged air cooler because cool air provides greater torque and power um, when it goes through the combustion phase in the motor. So it comes out the other side and comes up right over there, goes into the motor. So now uh, the next phase is gonna be installing the radiator and the fan belts.
just got the new fan belt in the mail. So since we dropped the radiator in already, we're, I'm gonna go ahead, put this on, tighten the tensioner, um, remount the tightener for the alternator, and then we're gonna fit the shroud back in for the fan. And then we should be ready to start putting the bolts back in, securing everything down. The alternator belt. So yesterday we had a couple that stopped out uh, who were fans of our channel and asked us if they could have a piece of that walnut tree that we cut down because they're gonna make some bowls out of them. So we went down, cut off a couple logs and we're waiting for them to show up now. Um, in the meantime, I'm working on the truck, but it should be pretty cool to see. That's gonna be something unique. Uh, have bowls carved from a tree on the farm. It's pretty cool. So I'm waiting for Travis to come back on the four-wheeler right now. He is going to help me install the shroud around the fan. Um, and it's not really something I want to do myself because I don't want to take the bolts out of the uh, brace on the radiator and have it fall forward on me. Now you can see there that Dad and I had drilled holes and put a, new, a belt piece on the flap that's supposed to go around the radiator to help push the air through it instead of around it. So we did that yesterday. There's a bolt that was broken off right there. Uh, otherwise it's supposed to hold it down like that, but I don't really think it's too big of an issue. Those ones should hold them on just fine. Dad had to go to Dubuque to get some hose fittings for the combine. So he's gonna stop out at Truck Country and get the coolant that I forgot to get. And um, once I get everything snug back on, we're gonna fill it back up, and depending if I can do it today, probably take Big Red for a ride. There we go. Yep, that looks a lot better than me. Now that we've got the radiator in, I've got two nuts that I need to put on underneath the radiator that'll compress those washers that we have underneath it, and uh, hopefully bring it down a little bit because it is sitting a little bit high. Now this is a real pain because I have to set the socket down above the frame and I have two little holes back in there that I have to stick this extension up through and then put the extension on the impact. And this is always fun because you can't see what you're working on. You just have to kind of feel around and hope that you're where you need to be. So there's these two washers that need to go on first. Uh, I'm just going to put those on with the nuts and then I'll worry about putting the socket down in there and then I'll secure it down. Green Acres is the place to be. I got it. One of two. Cool. So what these washers actually do are compress the rubber washers that are underneath and that's supposed to suck the radiator down and it's to provide vibration resistance against the rest of the truck because you don't want your radiator shaking around too much um, because over time it can spring leaks. Uh-oh, I'm missing the other rubber washer. Yeah, it's all right down here. There we go, we had it nice and soaked. All right. This might be too early to say anything, so I hope I don't regret saying this, but this is actually going back together fairly well. I'm gonna need my socket. Yeah, let's put the socket right there. Okay. This is probably the hardest part of the whole process. Maybe you guys can see it better. You can be my eyes. Good. 
There you have it, Big Red's fully assembled. We left the far hose off on the other side, so what we're gonna do is pour the coolant into that hose and it should hopefully backfill the radiator up, um, being as that the radiator does not have a fill cap on it anywhere. So we're gonna fill it, pour the coolant in on that side, and then once it starts coming out, we'll put it on and then we'll fill up the rest from the tank here. good long project done took a while but I uh, feel better about it now so I'm gonna let this sit here and run for a while I'm gonna take it down the road um, just get it up to speed and make sure that there aren't any immediate overheating issues um, just make sure that it's running good but overall I'm pretty happy now that we've got everything changed on it um, not really much to say it's been a couple weeks <laughs> I think I started like two weeks ago, so it hasn't been too long. Um, but I'm re really actually glad that I ended up taking the radiator out because I've learned so much more about this truck since we started working on it. I, when we bought this thing, I honestly knew nothing about semis. And now, you know, I know how to service it. I know, even when I t started tearing into the radiator, I really didn't even know what I was doing then. But um, after tearing it apart and putting it all back together, you see how things work, you see th how things go together, and you start to understand how these things tick. So I would recommend uh, for anybody, if you're considering buying a semi for your farm, I would consider doing it. Um, just be prepared to spend the extra dime if you have to, because uh, we are officially over the 30,000 budget that I originally allotted. But from what I've made from hauling what was in the bins here, I'm still not, I'm over 30,000, but I've already started to make some of my money back on it. So, um, Big Red's ready for harvest. I'm gonna let it run and I'm gonna go help Travis and Dad. They're working on the combine right now, but then I'm gonna take Big Red out for a quick run. The Denali's nice, but this is the truck that I'm really proud of. He doesn't know it yet, but he's gonna be driving this thing. <laughs> Won't ya? Won't ya? Yeah. So time will tell if we resolved the leaking issue. It should have, because the radiator was leaking, but we had no single source of evidence showing that that was the spot that we we're losing the most coolant out of. So. Um, other than that, it seems to be working pretty good. Uh, I have to top off the tank one more time because after I pulled it out of the shed, I didn't rev it up. I just let it idle outside. And um, I went to go pull it over by the hydrant so I could wash the motor down before it got too warm. And um, one of the pipes, the pipe that goes into the radiator was shoved in too far and the clamp was placed too far back in the pipe. So I just pulled it out, re-tightened it down and it's not leaking anymore. So. Um, I'll know more once I drive it around some more.
that doesn't solve the fuel issue, which is something that we need to address yet, but uh, in good time, uh, just one thing at a time. But this is a good job that we've been wanting to get done ever since we bought the thing. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, all how farms work. I'll be sure to keep you updated on uh, more things with Big Red, um, like the fuel. I'll let you know what we figure out with that. And Travis just pointed this out. But it looks like we lost some tread on this one. I'm not totally sure if it's from the trailer. Maybe I got into a spot that was a little bit too, I don't know, angled too sharply or what, but cut off a good portion of the tread there. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. <laughs>